All right, so let's talk about campaigns and triggers. What are they? What do they do? And why you shouldn't use them anymore. So I've got an old snapshot here set up that has campaigns and triggers in them. I haven't used them in years. Uh, ever since Workflow came out, I just scrapped them. And I'm going to show you why I scrapped them in just a second here. So let's get my head out of the way over into the corner here. Okay, so first of all, campaigns and triggers, the reason that I don't use them anymore is because workflows are campaigns and triggers all in one place. So if you want to, like, let's just say you bought or downloaded any of the old high level snapshots, um, or you purchased or were given a snapshot from somebody that built it, you know, a year and a half, two years ago, likely you're going to be in a situation where they used campaigns, they used triggers, and you're not going to know what the heck to do with them. And Hey, what's the deal with workflows? So that's what we're going to cover right now and hopefully help you guys out in figuring out how to actually take what is in campaigns and triggers and shift those over into workflows a little bit more smoothly. So, um, okay. So let's take a look at triggers. First of all, what is a trigger? A trigger is an, is an action that somebody takes inside your high level account. So a trigger could be based off of a response from a customer. A trigger could be based off of a form submission or a survey submission, basically any action that somebody takes inside your system, um, a trigger can be added. And this will all make so much more sense when we actually get into the workflow um, as to what triggers are and what actions are. So that's what triggers are. So let's just pick a random one here. Um, foreclosure buyer added to campaigns. This is an old one. So um, which event should trigger it? So inside nurture box, which is my CRM, um, added to campaign and they are in the campaign foreclosure lead campaign. So anytime somebody gets added to that campaign, that is the trigger. Now, what action do you want to, to perform based off of that trigger? So first and foremost, we're going to update the opportunity. That's action number one. That's the only action in this particular trigger. So there you go. That's a trigger. Now, what is a campaign? A campaign is what happens. What do you say to people in what timeline, what format? Do you send them a text message? Do you send them an email? Um, what do you want to actually deliver to the lead in themselves? So let's go into one of these ones here. So let's just go stick on the foreclosure sequence. So here you've got a text message. Um, you've got a, it waits one minute, sends the text message. It waits five minutes, sends an email. Waits 60 minutes, sends another text. 21 hours, sends another text and so on and so forth. So this is where, this is your messages to your leads, to your prospects. Um, and so campaigns and triggers, while they work together, they are completely separate, which can get a little bit confusing when you're just starting out with Go High Level, um, where you're like, hey, what is, how does this all work? The reason that I like workflows, and I'm going to show you this right now, let's just go ahead and we're gonna recreate the trigger that happens um, and build the campaign inside of workflows. So let me just pause this real sec, real quick and get this set up. Okay, so on this tab, we're gonna have our campaigns and our triggers. And on this tab, we are going to create a brand new workflow based off of this campaign sequence and these triggers. So first of all, let's go to the campaign configuration. So um, we've got add a user, so we don't need to do that necessarily right now. Um, we've got a next campaign. So what that's telling you is when this campaign is finished, add them to this other campaign. Um, and then we're going to allow multiple. We're going to stop on response. Uh, we can enter a lead value from a, for an opportunity and we can add tags from here as well. So that's anytime somebody gets added to this campaign, do these things. Um, now in this particular case, the trigger that got them, there was really no trigger that got them into that campaign. And this, in this particular use case, this was they got added to the campaign, then they wanted to create the opportunity. Now, I typically would do that the other way around. So let's dive into the workflows here, and we're going to go and we're going to create a new workflow to give you an idea of how does a campaign and trigger compare to a workflow. So let's just go in here and we're going to call this one the foreclosure uh, buyer leads. You can call that whatever you want. Now, right up here, you've got triggers. Um, and triggers are exactly the same as your previous triggers inside high level. So if we're gonna click on add a trigger, let's move my face out of the way again. 
There we go. These are all the things that can happen inside the system to get somebody into this workflow, which we will also be building out the campaign inside this workflow at the same time. So typically what I would do to get somebody into a workflow, you know, we would either use a tag, we would use a form, we would use a survey, something that they're filling out to express interest in whatever it is that you're offering them at any given time. So let's go with a form submitted here. And let's go and find a form. I'm sure we've got a foreclosure form in this one. So there you go, foreclosure copy. So this is the form that already exists inside the system that is going to trigger this. So whenever that form is submitted, do this um, is basically what we're building out right now. So form submitted, foreclosure copy. I'm just I always label these things. Because sometimes you might have multiple triggers inside a workflow. So you could have multiple ways that somebody can get into a workflow at any given time. So maybe we've got another one and a contact tag gets added. So we're gonna go contact tag added and we're gonna say, let's say, let's just add a new one and we're gonna go foreclosure lead, add tag. And then we're gonna label that as well. So there you go. There's two triggers now that can get somebody into this specific workflow. Now, within this workflow, now we can tell it what we want the system to do internally. So if we go back over here um, to our trigger, well, the first thing that happens in our trigger is that they get added to the update opportunity. So let's go and create that in the workflow. Your first action is update opportunity. So create slash update opportunity. We're going to go in pipeline. I think it's in the buyer pipeline. Let's just say, let's see what, so let's see what else we got. New lead pipeline, new lead. That sounds good to me. And then we can set different contact naming conventions here. Now, typically I would go contact.name. And if you're not sure where to find all of these different things, you can just click on the tag right here, go to contact. These are going to be all the standard custom fields that you can assign to a specific contact inside the workflow. So I'm just going to stick with the contact name. So contact.name is the full name of the contact that is in the system. Um, you can enter, enter your opportunity source. Now, if you're running um, Facebook ads, you can actually come down here. You can go attribution um, first or latest, um, and then you can set your UTM parameters here to know which uh, ad, ad set and creative they came in on. Um, and you can set all that stuff even from the Google source as well. And then you can set lead value. So let's just say this one's a $5,000 value right here um, and hit save. So what that's gonna do is it's going to create the opportunity the exact same way that the trigger in this case created the opportunity. Well, now what about the campaign? Well, let's get into it. Let's uh, go to the campaign. Let's go and find that foreclosure lead campaign right here. And the first thing that happens is that within one minute of them getting into this campaign, they're going to get this text message here. So I'm just going to see if I can copy this. No, I can't. I got to edit, jump in here, and then I can copy this whole text. And we're going to go back over here. So the first step was to wait one minute. So we're going to add a wait step here. We're going to do a time delay of one minute. And then again, I just label all of these things. Wait one minute. And then we're going to go in here and we're going to do an SMS. So all of these actions while I'm here, you've got your external communication actions right here. So that's your sending an email, sending a text message. This is an automatic call out to the user or the company assigned to your profile. This is a voicemail drop, messenger, back and forth conversation, Instagram DMs, manual text. So this is going to create a manual action for you or somebody on your team to go in and send them a text message manually. Manual call is the same. Um, I've got a video on how to create a dialer um, on YouTube and I will link that in here as well. Um, and then GMB message. So, hey, if somebody messaged my GMB page, I want to automatically message them back. So these are all the external communication functions that you can do from a workflow. Now, the rest of them, we've got some affiliate stuff here. I won't get into that. The rest of them are CRM events. So what do you want to have happen? How do you want to keep track of these people based on actions that they've taken inside the CRM. And there are tons and tons and tons of these um, that you'll have to just learn over, over time. Um, if you follow my YouTube channel or you follow me in the Facebook group, um, we'll go over a lot of these over time as well. So 
Um, these are all CRM functions. So how do you manage and keep track of things within the CRM? But in this case, we are going to send a text message. And that text message is going to be this message here. I'm just going to label this SMS1. Um, and again, you'll see that they're using the, all these custom values here, custom fields um, within the system as well. So make sure you know kind of what those are. If it says a custom value, it is a custom value that is system-wide. If it's a custom field, it is a specific parameter for that contact um, where you've created a field for information for that contact. So there's your first text message. So let's go back to the actual campaign itself and we can look at the next one right here. So the foreclosure list requested on Facebook, there's your template email right there and you can just copy this and paste that in here. Uh, what was the wait step here? Let's go to double check. The wait step was five minutes. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna add another wait step. We're gonna wait for five minutes and let's label that here. And then instead of sending a text message, we are going to send a email. So we're gonna send an email uh, you can set your from name or from email and then subject lines here. Um, let's go and copy that and let's come over here to the headline right here. And we'll put that in the subject line here. Now, the reason I'm not going to put this in here is because I want to show you some of the settings here. But now you kind of get the idea. So you can start to build out your email SMS campaigns in here as if you were doing it from a campaign. Um, and you can set your triggers all in the same place, which is why I like to do workflows. And the other really cool thing is as you start to build these out, everything is a visual component that is easy to explain to your clients and easy to kind of figure out, hey, where, what's happening? What's the next step? It's all in one convenient location instead of having to bounce around between campaigns and triggers to figure out, okay, which trigger fired off this campaign or which campaign fired off this trigger. It's all in one place inside workflows. So if you wanted to continue doing that, you can literally continue to copy and paste things um, until this gets done. But I'm going to show you an easier way to do this um, that will require mostly just putting in your triggers um, as to how you want people to get into those workflows. So let's go back out of here and let's go and create a new workflow. Now you've got this option right here to import from a campaign. So if you have access to um, the campaigns, which you obviously should, you can go and click this import button and you can pick your campaign. So let's go foreclosure lead campaign here, click import. And what this is going to do is it's going to import. It's gonna give you a little bit of instructions, but here's that campaign completely imported, ready to go for you from there. And then all you have to do is add your triggers. So um, let's go with the tag was added. So we've got a contact tag here again, tag added. And this was the foreclosure lead tag, save trigger. And then we've also got the form submitted. Form is foreclosure copy. Now, if you're running Facebook ads, you can, you can also link this directly to your Facebook lead forms. Um, I don't have a Facebook account. Oh, I do. So there you go. Foreclosure form copy in my Facebook lead forms. And that will also put them into this workflow. So that's the fastest way to convert campaigns um, into workflows. But you also then have to be aware of, hey, what triggers were, what triggers were happening based on certain things. Um, and that's really how you can leverage kind of converting your campaigns and triggers and making your life just so much easier. Um, now I am having some conversations with some people who, you know, maybe they had a snapshot before, um, through another company and then that company's not giving them their snapshot. Um, really your best bet at that point is to come into your campaigns. And if you still have access to those things, just come into your campaigns and then just copy verbatim kind of what this is, maybe take some screenshots of it, uh, but copy all of your emails, all of your text messages that you want to send out. And then you're going to go and you're going to manually create the workflow for this campaign um, and then just add your triggers accordingly. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, um, if this is on YouTube, obviously likes, comments, um, shares, the works all helps out a lot. Um, and if you're watching this on Facebook, then you know what to do. Just give me a comment. Let me know if this was helpful and we will see you in the next one. Take care.